I was just with Mario before this happened. He didn't have a, he didn't have a gun. The man was just a working, he was just a hard working man. Looking out for his kids. And what happened was that was a massacre. That was an assassination. I never seen anything like that. My brother didn't have a gun. All the shots was in the windows. He didn't get out the car. Unless the police had x-ray vision and they could see through the car that he had a gun. That we don't know about some type of I mean, but it, was just, it, was, it wasn't justified and, and we need justice. Because I just want to ask the people one thing. Like the police said that he stepped out the car, but why was his body carried out the car? You step out the car and fire at the police, best believe they will shoot you and kill you right where you stand. But he was inside the car when when they pulled him out. The officer. So just 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 understand. Just because they police, that police are human beings. Human beings do lie. I don't want the people to make this a black and white thing. Let's make this a human being thing. If you have a kid or a child that has died, if you have any type of kid, just imagine how you would feel. Yo, if your kid was, my bad, my bad. If your kid was took for no reason, he has a mama that has to deal with the fact that her son just died for no reason. So, parked in front of his car, the man jumped on the hood. His sister come out the window looking at it. The whole thing. She, she saying, sir, please stop shooting. The officer is reloading his gun, talking, looking at his sister, dead in her eyes, and says, what am I supposed to do? He has a gun. Reloaded his gun and standing on the hood of his car and kept shooting me, telling him to put his hands up. How you gonna put your hands up? You shot. You know what I'm saying? If you feel threatened, a routine traffic stop, if you feel threatened, the police will be behind the, they'll be behind the car or something. They just started shooting. I was a hit. I was, that was, that was just like they, they the biggest gang, but like they used to always say, police is, is a gang. How well did you know Mario? Man, that was my, man, that was my brother, man, my twin. You know what I'm saying? That was my brother, man. I lost my boy Arlay. I just lost my brother, Deshaun Morris, last month. All I got left, man. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what do you think's really? What do you think's going on with the police and all these shootings? The police are crooked, and I'm gonna tell you that because I got, I get pulled over all the time. The police tell me, Mark, go ahead and run. We want you to run. Officer, why you want me to run? They want to shoot you. I'm drunk. Is that something that happened to you? Yeah. Me. I was driving my car drunk. I get pulled over by the police. I hit the police car. I backed up, hit the police car. I got to do you why this will take me to jail, right? No. They tell me, Marcus, we just want guns and drugs. And they let me drive away. Police are crooked, man. They ain't protecting us. They trying to get us out the way. They're not solving no, they're not solving any murders. So they gotta kill people. They're trying to delete us, man. They're trying to delete us all right now. Feel me? And back to the car situation, though, know, if the doors was open, shouldn't there be bullet holes inside the door? No bullet holes inside, neither doors. Oh, they crooked, man. They crooked. They're trash. Do you guys think this thing is a black and white thing? You think it's a, it's a race issue? Oh, oh, oh. What's, what's your I think so. I think, I think so. so, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. So I'm saying the police, they saw there's been six murders. They've been killing people. They train to kill. They train to shoot to Shoot to kill, man. Die. You know what I'm saying? What about, what about they say, uh, they say uh, Mario had a pellet gun with him? Do you, do you think that's true? No, you don't think so? I find it very ironic that they say he had a pellet gun and there was no other shooter prior to that. They tried to say somebody else had a pellet gun. Nobody goes around carrying pellet guns nowadays. It's too real out Do the police have x-ray vision where they can see inside the car? Do, the, do some certain yeah, guys. Nice, how can they nice. see inside Real this man's car? He never got out of his car. How did they see he had a gun? If he had on a his gun, waist. If he had a gun, why would the police officer stand on the hood of a car if, if you couldn't see his hands up? How did you see a gun? Exactly. If he got a pistol on him, why would he? Yeah, why would why he be would on the hood? Because he didn't get shot through the windshield. Why would you be on the hood of the car? But everyone that's been stopped by the police knows the standard poli police procedure when you get stopped and they don't feel safe. You turn off the ignition. You throw your keys out the window. You place your hands out the window and you open the car door with your right hand. Once you're out of the car, you place your knuckles together and you get on your knees. None of that took place at all, period. No, so, how did, so how did he have, how are you, how did you feel for your life if you're standing on the hood of a car, let loose, let, let bullets loose in this man? After he had already slumped over in the seat, already was slumped.
jumped over in the seat. What? You reload it. What do you what do you guys think needs to be done? What's the solution? How can we fix this problem? We need justice. justice. We need justice. He needs to be tried for murder. for murder. Both of them. Both we need to be when he tried to lie. How you gonna jump on the hood of a car and shoot in and say that the person had a gun? If he had a gun, why would you jump on the hood of the car for him to shoot you up in your stomach? No, he didn't have a gun. You jumped up there and started shooting Overkill. The, with the windshield of the car. Overkilling him. We need justice. We need justice. We need the police to stop killing because they have a badge. They think it's okay and legal for them to murder. Then they're gonna they cuss at the family members. They threatened his sister. Said they was gonna say, "Get yeah. the fuck back, or we're gonna shoot you." Bro. Yeah, she went out to tell them to stop. The sister went out to tell them to stop shooting him and the brother-in-law. And all of a sudden, they turned around while they were still shooting her at them. Turned around and told her if she didn't go in, exactly. they was finna kill her. And 40, then they told her mom. Thing. They told his mom, "We will be able to identify your." son by his teeth. Are you serious? And they had to they, they had to sit in the hospital for two hours before they even told us he was gone. They had we had to wait for other police to get there and they pulling up with coffee and like they stopped at 7 Eleven, you know what I'm saying? They stopped at 7 Eleven, they took they, they coffee and donuts. They took yeah. he died at five o'clock. We didn't know until seven o'clock in the morning. The officer needs to be tested for drugs. He needs right to be there. tested for drugs. I believe he was on the ecstasy deal to make him show out and carry on like that. You know what I mean? He was a, a police officer going wild. Out of control. Beyond control. You know, he needs to be tested for drugs, for ecstasy pills. While they tried to say Mario had ecstasy pills, he didn't have ecstasy pills, he didn't have a gun, he wasn't high, he wasn't drunk, he wasn't even sitting in the car smoking weed. You know what I mean? That was an officer gone wild on the e pill. You know what I mean? That's how people act when they on e pills, they just go crazy. Were you, were you there the night that it happened? Yes, I was there. And, and, and t tell me about that. Tell me about, did you see it happen? Yes. So can you can you give me a rundown, if, if you can? Uh, tell people what happened from the time the car, you actually witnessed this. Right. Okay. Yes. And what was your name? Chantel Stokes. So can, can you tell me what you, what you saw, what happened? I saw the police tell him, tell them to raise their hands up. They got out the car, told them to raise their hands up. Okay, they ra his his win his his car window would only go down so far. The window was down this much, and he stuck his hands out. That little part of the window being cracked, his hands was able to go out just that much to be seen. While the other brother-in-law window was all the way down, he stuck his hands all the way out the window. And the officer started shooting in. And then when his hands dropped, they paused. They had already killed him then because they had shot him about eight times already. On that note. And then when his hands dropped, they told him to raise his hands again raise your hands in the air again and jumped on the hood of the car and just commenced to start just shooting all over in the in the hood of the car the windshield front windshield full of bullet holes go look at it front windshield full of bullet holes from the police jumping up the, the hood of the car looked like he was in a car accident like he hit a car, another car they jumping on the hood of the car tearing that up so bad shooting unloading guns in the windshield while they sitting in the car in the seat and after the fact no, no, I gotta... after the fact that's when they got off the car and opened up the car door and started pulling him out of the car he never they never got stepped foot out the car not once no, no, the... when he came out the car he was already deceased now, now the press release I have it shows uh, that the police said it has a picture of a, a pellet gun. Did no, you, no, no, no. It was no, like no pellet gun. No pellet gun. No pellet gun. You know what I mean? Th those are two bad 
officers that need to be off the force, yeah. that need to be incarcerated themselves and trialed and convicted for first degree murder. That was a pre that was a premeditated murder that, that took place there. Yeah, they they executed him. They executed him. That's that's right. That's right. Right. Was execution. That was my nephew that they shot. My boy, my boy was killed. Yeah, they shot my nephew, who landed in the hospital right now with 13 bullets in him. Behind Vallejo Police Department nurses. We have justice just like they do. And we want it. We want it now because they were wrong. They yes, were they wrong. Were. They were that wrong. was they unnecessary. Too. And I'm going to yeah. fight to the end of this. When it ends, we're going to be on top. My son was killed too. Really? By the police. Hey, my son was killed on June 30th. So we're all getting together. Yeah. We're all getting together. We're all getting united. Yeah. yeah. My son was also killed by the police. You know, and this is doing too much and too many. They doing too much. They doing too much and too many. And it needs to stop. And they picked the wrong one. No, yeah. that. They, they picked the wrong one. They picked the wrong one. What do you, you think is the answer? What can we do? What can we do to change this? What can you do to change it? Start, start arresting them just like they arrest regular citizens. Start off, start start off, off arresting them right. and, and, and right. no slack. Right. Just straight up a trial right. like all everyone else be trialed right. and convicted. Charged, right. trial, yeah, and convicted. Right, and the police need to take more action on hiring their police officers. If you're so scared, that means you're not fit for the job that you're doing. Yeah. If you're and not why, fit, why are you on the force if you're fit for the why job? Why is the police? Why is the police getting? Why are the police take? Why are they giving them a leave of absence with pay? After they didn't kill, that was a murder and an attempt to murder. It went home. It went home. Murder and, sit with and their attempt kids. to murder. A murder is somebody that murders somebody. Go home and sit with their kids with blood on their hands. Right. They get to be with their family. Come on. Murder and attempt to murder. We need justice in Vallejo, y'all. We need justice. You know, the police is not right. But you must also understand. And he was a. They were family men. They were not right. out there selling drugs. They were not doing that. They were going to work. He was called in to go to work. He had to take a drug test that day. He was a family man. He, they did not get out of the car. They were not suspects. Suspect. You, when you go to school and you're on a campus, are you suspect of being a student? When you are in a library, are you suspect of being an author? No. They were family men. They were at their home. Are you suspect of being a neighbor? No. They were in part, front of sitting house. in front of their house. They never got out the car. They complied. They were already stopped. They were parked. A police car came up to them, shined a light into their uh, windshield so they could not see. They addressed that. Their hands were up. They were surrendering. They were compliant. And for that, they were murdered. They were not vic They were victims. They were not suspects. Did, did you know uh, uh, Mario? Yes, I did. I'm a family member. And then, can I ask you your name? Uh, Philip. Philip. Yes. And, and how, what's your relation to him? I am a brother-in-law. They were the, yeah, they were not. They were sitting there. There was there's no gunshots inside the door. They were pulled out of the car. They did not get out of the car once they were shot. Once they were mur once. Romaro was murdered and Joe was shot and injured. It was, by the way, it was not a shot to the buttocks. He was shot into the stomach. It hit a major artery. It ended in his rectum, and it is, the bullet is still there. Yeah, you had, he had to be resuscitated on Say the spot. That is. And that is Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson. That was, shot like that. That was not. That was that not shot. Nephew. That shot. That was not a raised room. And he was. He had to be. He was in ICU. He had to be. He had to be resuscitated, and he was in major surgery. So. So any of those accusations, any of those inaccurate reports were very untrue. You have to understand, these are family men, these are members of our community that were trying, they were trying have, to take have us. You, have you spoken with him uh, in the hospital or is he able to speak with anyone? He's able to speak. Able to speak. And, and, and can, can you tell me what, what he said? No, I, I cannot. Spoke, I will not I at this time. Thank you though for asking. But I the, spoke with him. This I is Mario's him. sister and she Mario, spoke with Mario, my him. brother, he was murdered by the Vallejo Police Department. And I said murdered. This isn't an excessive force case. It isn't a mistaken identity or anything. Nothing preceded them being murdered by the police. 
the police were out that night looking for somebody to violate. Right. They were out looking for it. What, what, what do you, what do you, what do you think the police are, are doing that? What's, what's the reason? Scared. They because they feel like they can. Yeah. yeah. Because they feel like they feel like Vallejo is. They feel like Vallejo has people of a, a lower socioeconomic status, and that they could violate their rights. Because they have authority. They're not going to do anything about it. And it's been going on ever since that officer was killed. Kapu. Officer Kapu was killed. This has been going on. Once again, there was another group. There was another group of people a long time ago in history that had to put their hands up and were marched to their death. There was a Nazi party that did the exact same thing. And it, start, it didn't start big. It started small by town, by town, by small group. The same thing is going on in this country. And people have to stand up and understand their history to know exactly what is going on. It's just not also just class. It is class. It is not just it is not race. just black, white race. Class. It is Social class. Socialization. You have to run. It's not just black, Mexican. It's black, white, Asian. Everyone. There's no one in this America that is is, is resent. We are not safe. <laughs> no, we are not safe. And let's make we it are clear, not this is not a case of a family who is just anti-cop. No, not they, at all. We are cop-loving people, okay? But just like any other class or group of people, there are bad cops and there are good cops. Yes. And my brother and my brother-in-law, unfortunately, fell victim to bad, bad cops. Exactly. And they were That's murdered. Right. They never exited the vehicle. They, didn't pay. they, they never were cut resisted. out of the vehicle. Died. My brother died alone. Alone while his family waited outside yellow tape. Yes, we were there. We were trying to get to them. They would not let. They pushed us back. They moved the crime scene more than once. Other, other, it was not just Vallejo PD was there. There were multiple. Maritime multiple. Academy Police. Napa. Napa Sheriff driving all in and out of the crime, crime scene. scene. Contaminating Two it. People. Stepping over bullets before they put down the numbers. Bullet shells being kicked around, moved around. Cars being moved. Different evidence being moved. Their hands were not, their hands were put. Once they were not bad. They put twist ties on my brother's their hand hands. After they pulled them out of the car. After they pulled them out of the car. There were no bags to protect any evidence. Look at how they transported the vehicle. The vehicle was not even. Look at how they transported it. Regular tow truck to a tow yard. Not what to about a foreign camp. <laughs> not what to about an area. Not the police should be answering these questions now. Why are there no bullets in the door? But most importantly, why did the police decide to approach them that night? They received no call. They saw them breaking no laws. They were guilty of being black, being black and sitting in front of their homes. The police had to feel very comfortable to shine a light unprovoked, uncalled. They, the, the media needs to ask the police these questions. Okay. Once again, My brother's character is not the question here. Not at all. He was a great person. They were he was not an angel. He was a person. And he deserved to have his rights and his right to live. Joe had a right to not be attempted, uh, attempted to be murdered. Such deadly force was not no necessary. No force was necessary. There, there was, was no, no problem. Resistance. There was no confrontation. There was no altercation. It was put your hands up and they were gunned fire down. Fire. After putting the hands up. They jumped on the hood to fire down into right. the vehicle. They jumped on the hood and fired into the, into the vehicle. Well they cut my the brother out of the seatbelt because his seatbelt was broken and he had to tie it in order for him to be legally driving in the car. They had to cut his shirt and the t-shirt, his t-shirt and the seatbelt off in order to get him out of the car after
and they shot him. And he was not, we were not allowed to see his body. He, we were not allowed to identify him. My mother has still been not, has still not been able to identify her son. They exactly. let a we security saw a guard bag. identify him. The family member, a security guard that he didn't, that he didn't know. That wasn't known to us. That was not a family member. That's who identified his body. We were there. We were at the scene of the crime as well as the hospital. They kept us away. They pushed us back and we were not, they said we had no rights to his body. How did, how did you find out? Read this letter here. Here. Oh, here. Read this letter. This is from We got this letter to, to get to the mayor. We want you to read it. This is a letter for the letter mayor. to read to the mayor. To give to him. This is a letter to the mayor. To Honorable Mayor, Os to Honorable Mayor Osby Davis, my name is Reverend Floyd D. Harris Jr. I am the president of the National Network in Action. We are a civil and human rights organization. As you may know, there has been a young man by the name of Mr. Mario Romero who was killed early Sunday morning by your Vallejo Police Department. I have talked with the family, and I am very saddened <coughs> to listen to how you have been disrespected by the police department. Your police department has shown no respect to this family on any level. I have read your Vallejo Police Department mission statement. It reads, to provide professional law enforcement services that enhance, protect, and promote the quality of life for persons residing, visiting, or doing business in the city of Vallejo. As a pastor, I went to Candlelight Vigil Sunday night to give my support to the community and the family. I was approached by dozens of stories of residents in your city who have been harassed and profiled. As a pastor and a civil rights leader, I respect your position and must believe that you wouldn't support this type of behavior inside your police department. <coughs> I am requesting a meeting with you and the chief of police with the family. Reverend Floyd Harris Jr., President of National Network in Action. Okay, so and that's what, 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 what we're gonna what we're gonna do now is uh, thank everyone for being here today. My name is Reverend Harris. I'm the National President of National Network in Action. Uh, we have uh, uh, supported the movement and the family in this community of injustice that has, has taken place here in Vallejo. Uh, understand that that the cavalry is on their way. Uh, we have contacted people from all across the country. Uh, we're going to be coming in here doing uh, cop watch training, know your rights training, to educate and empower the people of this community. This will not be tolerated no more. I will encourage this community, especially our young people, is to register to vote. Because the only thing that politicians understand at the end of the day is who votes in this city. And if you have to recall people to get them out of office, to get their attention, and you put people in office who are going to push your agenda and stop this type of nonsense in your community, then you have to do what you have to do. Because as a citizen, you have the right to put people in office. As a citizen, you have the right to take people out of office. And that's the power that you have. It's time that we empower you here as a people. It's time that we empower you as a people in this community. Because trust me, trust me, trust me. These officers right now on paid administrative leave, getting paid for what they did, and that's nonsense. And so today, with the family, I am going, in, going inside to deliver, hand deliver this letter to this mayor to let him know that this family has been disrespected from my standpoint on every level uh, in this community. And so as we go in here, uh, uh, Mom, I don't know who you want to go in here with us, and we're going to hand deliver this letter to the mayor. Just immediate family. Just immediate family. I don't know where I'm so exhausted right there. <laughs> Imagine how you feel right now. Here's mom. Come on, Amy. Hi, is the mayor in? He's not. 
My name is Reverend Harris, yes. and uh, I'm a civil rights leader, mm -hmm. and I wanted to hand deliver this letter to okay. him in regards to the situation of the last year, I'm pretty sure. And uh, from what I've witnessed, uh, the family would like to speak with him uh, and the chief of police, uh, just out of concern that they have uh, being handled. And uh, as a civil rights leader in the past for myself, that's what I work for. So, um, Thank you again.